Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles. We wanted to bring you a video with some of our hots. It's a little bit different. We have one rattlesnake cage that this thing has destroyed we need to clean and a gaboon viper that we also need to clean in water. So we decided today we're going to have a good old fashioned grudge match. I gotta tell you when I suggested that video, we're gonna decide which one is a dominant snake. Is it the gaboon viper or the western diamondback? Uh, my partners here both thought we were talking about like the old type of like you know MTV claymation fights to the death or some shit. Not what we're talking about because these things would never come across each other in the wild fight. Although that'd be interesting, I think it would be a, a, a futile point because they're never going to see each other, right? But what if they do? <laughs> what if they do? They're going to interbreed and create. A, no, they can't even happen because they don't even have babies. This actually, they both do have live birth. Yeah, they do. Maybe we could breed them. Could you imagine if we could? You could have a gaboon viper with heat pits and a rattle tail. Make the spider tail, basically. <laughs> so anyway, what we decided to do is we're going to show you one of each, and then we are going to, each we have picked a side, and we're going to talk about why we believe that this species of snake would be the best venomous snake versus the other one. That makes sense. So which one's a better venomous snake? The Western Diamondback Rattlesnake or the Gaboon Viper. Now, let's remember, we know which one's more exotic. It's not about that. It's about which animal you think is most equipped to handle the world as a venomous snake. That's it. Not which one's prettier. Not which one's got a more badass reputation. Which one is the best equipped snake? I'm going to argue for the Western Diamondback. Caleb, you're going to argue for the Gaboon Viper. So really simple. So let's start. Uh, now, if we're going to argue for them, we're going to show them. That's just how it works around here. Hi, buddy. Nobody else wanted to pick this guy up. I got told he's a little too spicy. That's why I got this job. Uh, but he's coming out right at your balls. Hope he changes my mind. Come on, buddy. Crawl through a little bit. I want like to get you in my hand. So this is a hypermelanistic western diamondback right here. Now why do I think this is the best venomous snake? Well it's quite simple guys. Uh, one, it's got more tools in the trade, right? Where the Gaboon Viper is very, very impressive. The Gaboon Viper doesn't have the heat sensing pits like this guy has. This guy can literally see vision like the Predator. Nice, really cool heat sensing pits. Well, stay on the table there buddy. Otherwise, you're going to go back in the bucket if you play around too much. You can't get me all tangled around. That doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> also, it's got this really cool rattle, which it can use to keep itself from having to use its venom. Now, it doesn't have the venom yield of a Gaboon Viper. That's just fact, right? However, it does have a good enough venom yield. You know, it's kind of like sometimes too much of a good thing is still just too much. This thing's got enough to do the job. It isn't lacking in that department at all. Um, its camo camouflage is pretty good. It's just a really badass species. Now, this is obviously a morph. This is not how they look like in nature, you know, but uh, I don't have a normal looking Western. You just won't stay on the table for me, will you, buddy? Uh, but this thing is just cool as can be. Come here. There you are. <laughs> it is really hard to talk and do this at the same time. Okay. I'm going to put you back in the bucket so I can just sing your praises. Maybe I can put you on the floor for a minute. That'll be a little easier. Come on. So now we got a chance to see him. I gotta put him in here so I can actually concentrate on what I want to say. So if you look at the face of that, you'll see those heat sensing pits. That is something that only pit vipers have. Uh, this being a pit viper, it has them. So we can see it has more senses than the Gaboon Viper has. That gives it a strong advantage as to why it's the best. The warning system also gives it a strong advantage as to why it's the best. It's speed on land. The Gaboon Viper is a, a very slow crawler. Okay? Very, very do, to do, to do, to do. This thing is not. For a snake, it moves at a pretty good clip. It's not the fastest snake on the planet, but it's good enough. Um, so it also has a really high survivability rate. These things have a whole ton of area that they survive in, a whole bunch of different climates that they've adapted to. They are very, very adaptable species. Uh, you know, there's not a lot to say about them. Like, to me, honestly, there is not a lot of venomous snakes out there 
that one could argue are more highly evolved or more prepared than a rattlesnake, especially your western diamondback or your eastern diamondback or your timber, the large three, right? They've got good body size, good muscle, very, very lightning fast strikes. This is one of the quickest striking snakes on the planet, so they, they can really reach out and touch somebody. They have a good strike distance, a good strike range, um, good enough everything. There's nothing they're lacking. This is kind of a jack-of-all-trades snake, right? Other than the, the tail that makes a noise, they are the best on the planet at that. No other snake can make a noise like a rattlesnake. There are some that do have some audible warnings or saw scale vipers and whatnot, but nothing can do what these guys do. It is the fastest muscles in the animal kingdom that make that tail shake. It moves quicker than hummingbird wings. So that is their, their, what they're known for. But everything else, they're kind of like a jack-of-all-trades, right? Good fangs, good venom. Good venom yield. It's actually one of the higher venom yields on the planet, but not the highest, which I'm sure my uh, adversary will certainly bring up here in a minute. <laughs> it is what it is. But everything is, is just pretty top notch. They're in the upper echelon of everything. The one part where they're going to get kind of a knock is a venom toxicity. As far as venomous snakes go, their toxicity level isn't super high. It's going to fall below almost all of your elapids. It will fall below the Gaboon Viper, which I'm also sure he's going to point out amongst some other things. Let me ask you a question about venom toxicity. If you have a decent toxicity, which it does, and a high yield of venom, which it also does, the question really only should come is, does it have enough venom to kill its prey or to ward off a predator? Yes, this thing can kill me. That's all it needs, right? It doesn't need necessarily to be able to kill 400 humans in one drop. Uh, that's not necessary. This has enough venom to do the job, and its venom is hot enough to do the job. It's also going to cause immense pain, so it's going to be a very good defensive venom and a good offensive venom. So that is why I think the rattlesnake is the best. It's going to set itself apart, especially with speed, heat pits, strike speed, and last but not least, it's telltale rattle. Any questions? No. Nope. Kurt, nothing at all? You already think this is the best one, right? What? <laughs> oh, you rat bastard. Let me close this camera. Oh, I forgot to reach way over here. All right, so we're back, and it's my turn to defend the Gaboon Viper, which... But before you do that, I want to just share one thing. Make sure, guys, when you're working with one of the snakes, and you have multiple people, you always need to have... Somebody backing you up, right? Indeed. That's why you had that hook. Yep. Whenever I had the western. Yep. Yeah. And now you got two hooks because gaboons, they're they're big and you need two hooks to support yep. their body weight. Yeah. It's cool though. I've got him. I've got you. I've yeah. Got you. Yeah. I feel really uh, real safe. Real safe with that back up there. As you should. All right. And so then, you know, I do always pop it with my hand first, but then afterwards, I always. Just if I can get it from this side, get that, and then I don't let it fly all the way back. Because if you have a snake that's on the back side, wait, and you let this fly back, this whole trash can's going with. Not great to have a gaboon viper in the air, or any venomous snake for that matter. But gaboon viper particularly, because if I uh, if I get bit by this thing, I'm just dead. It's just just how it is. Right? There's no no oopsie daisies. I'm just gonna sit here, hopefully respectfully and with some dignity die but more than likely i'll be on the floor in agony crying like a little baby so and she's coming up here to even say hi to me or bite you in the penis or that which she probably is more likely wanting to do so yes for those who did hear these things are incredibly incredibly lethal um a bite from this without anti-venom 10 times out of 10 is probably going to kill me well, you're more comfortable there yeah she's just being a little now, double hooking her is a little fun because it's not something we really did with her very young. And she is the length of... Actually, this works really well on the neck. She's like the width of the trash can. So she can use all four sides to... I can't support with this little bitty hook. Yeah, I need... There you are. Now we're there. So it's not something she's used to. Once you get her up, though, she's pretty good. Now we're going to see how well she sits on the table. She hasn't had to do that since she was very little. You can see her huffing and puffing, and she's really all talk right now. Um, now, that doesn't mean go stick your hand there and pet it, because she will become all bark very quickly. So, why is this the ultimate venomous snake? Well, for one, you heard me right off the bat. 
I get bit, I'm dead. It's game over. No do-overs. No reset. No pl unplug your Xbox and then plug it back in to start over. You're donezo. Night, night. Unless you have the antivenom, which I am trying to get right now. FDA, please approve of me. I'm trying really hard. I know I'm 26 and young, but 27 now. But I'm getting responsible. Um, beyond that, though, yeah. <laughs> the venom yield on this thing, like you said, it was, I was going to bring up, I am. It is brutal. Not only is the yield a lot, because they do have very large um, venom glands, but one drop is all it's got to take, and this thing will drop way more than a singular drop. You know, and beyond that, you know, it's got two inch fangs. Two inch. The largest fangs in the venomous community. There is nothing this thing could probably bite and it not pierce. I'm talking, it's going to pierce through elephant hide. It's going to pierce through anything it needs to, right? And, and, you know, this looks like a large snake, and it is. You know, it takes two hooks to support the body weight. This thing is not done growing. This thing could get every bit of six feet long and every bit of round is my waist. Maybe not that big, but we're trying to win a fight, so we're, we're going to exaggerate a little bit. But they, I mean, they, these guys are heavy-bodied slug. You, you're, I think Blood Python that has the venom to kill you, your ancestors, your great-grandchildren, and then on and so forth. So this thing does not mess around. I can argue that this thing... Right, we talk about rattlesnakes, jack of all trades. That's fair, right? Well, what's the saying? Jack of all trades, master of none. What is this thing a master of? This thing is a master of stealth. You go over there, and most of the people who get bit by these are not because they're messing around with them, like with rattlesnakes, where nine times out of ten people who got bit were because they were just fucking around with it. Almost every bite that comes from this is going to be because they didn't see it walking down a path. And so this thing's camouflage is actually insane. It doesn't really look like it because it's on this colored table. But if you look, you if you just look at it, it's just dead leaf colored. This is near fresh shed. There's a shed in there that we're going to pull. It's probably a week old top. So fresh sheds, you're looking at nice, clean uh, colors. It goes from nice browns. I'm going to try and not touch her. And, and she's working really great, behaving great for me. So I don't want to stir her up too much. But up here, I don't know if the camera's coloring it. These are nice blue colors. Listen to that. She's a little turd. Uh, with that, you're mimicking all kinds of dead leaves and plants in Africa, as well as the gray sands and things like that where these guys come from. The other crazy thing is, listen to her, right? That is, I don't know if it's kept picking it up on the boom mic or not. And I really don't want Curtis to get super close because she does still have an impressive strike range, even though she is a, is a fat slug. They do. It's not as loud as a rattle. I won't deny that. But it does have a way to be like, hey, don't fuck with me. I will end your life. I will end your family bloodline. It ends with you. Stops. Dunzo. Um, so it does, you know. And most people don't realize. I think a lot of people we bring over, when they hear her walking by, they're like, oh, my God, that was the Gaboon Viper. They are impressed with how loud that is. So not only can this thing camouflage and end your life in a, in a heartbeat you know it is going to give you some sort of warning of you know don't fuck with me the other thing is is if you look at its eyes right that's something me and matt talked about earlier today well curtis too because he was here i know <laughs> curtis too he was here <laughs> um look at that tongue that is really cool. I love her tongue. It's half pink, half black. If you look at her eyes, it's it's a very whitish color um, with a black little speck in the middle. They can move that back and forth, and there are some studies that say they use that for maybe caudal luring birds. So they have the insight to trap animals. There was also a study done that not only do they just sit in one spot, but they will actively push leaves in a pile around them to bury deeper in and set real traps, you know? They don't just lay there and blend in, but they'll push some leaves that are more favorable to them and make them more hidden to ambush prey walking by. And, and we're not talking just like your average day, everyday sparrow. I mean, they're, we're talking big birds. These things are massive, right? If you're talking snakes that eat in the wild, you know, things that are bigger than their waist right now that's probably could probably be eating almost jumbo rats they'll, they'll even eat hoofed animals yeah 
So the the size alone, this thing, even if it does bite you, and we've seen it with rats, when she bites the rat, she picks it up off the ground. Uses all that muscle to lift whatever it's fighting off the ground, and they don't even stand a chance. It's just constantly pouring that venom in there at that time. So as compared to the rattlesnake, man, the rattlesnake does have a lot of cool things, a lot of cool advantages. This thing will outpower, outmuscle almost every venomous snake out there, and, and almost a lot of the regular snakes, you know, as opposed to really odd, like your big retics, your big carpets, your big larger snakes, but anything that's not a big constrictor, this thing will outmuscle any day of the week and will even outmuscle most mammals. Um, I, I wouldn't go anywhere near them. So you got the strength, you got the camouflage, you got the venom that could kill the entire planet if it wanted to. There's not a thing that could probably survive a bite if it got it good enough. I mean, I could even see them dropping elephants if they really had to. So that is my argument for that's the best thing and why you are going to vote for it to be the best. Listen to that. That deserves a vote on its own. Because, again, these are our opinions, whether we actually believe them or not, <laughs> right? Because we have to argue both sides. Um, it's up to you to make that vote. Matt, any questions? A couple things I'd like to point out, too, just to expand on a few things and kind of expand on why we did this exercise. You know, Caleb really pointed out the camo of this snake, and he's absolutely correct. If uh, you can with zoom, Kurt, I don't want you to get too close to this thing. If you notice its head, so if this thing were to bury itself in the leaf litter, all this color breaking up and breaking up, that part of it shows you're not even going to notice it. That head would be the thing that's up, so its eyes can flick to appear like a bug to attract prey, whether it's a bird or a small mammal coming to get whatever bug it thinks that is or whatever it may be. Uh, that head is specifically designed, see that dark line running down the middle of it? It's specifically designed to look like a fallen leaf. That is the shape of a leaf and it has that center vein like a leaf. So even though that head would have to be up most of the time partly, it looks like one leaf laying on top of that, that leaf pile. So that's just a really cool thing about their camo. Uh, a couple things to also add. These things, you know, both both the Gaboon Viper and the Rattlesnake literally are one of the best snakes for what they are mm. in their environment, if we're being honest, Indeed. right? Yeah. These are both badass sons of bitches for where they come from, <laughs> yeah. and neither one of them are really... This is probably closer to being a, uh, oh, you'd say an apex predator. The Rattlesnake has a lot of birds and shit that prey on it, yeah. but, I mean, this thing is eaten by shit, too. <laughs> there, there are things yeah. that do eat it. So snakes in general, other than their giant constrictors, really aren't usually apex predators anyway but um this thing's strike one thing i want to cover and you kind of hit on it being like a blood python what that also means is it can strike at me right now though i'm behind it right it has a strike that can go 360 degrees they can flip over and strike they are amazing at that they are they are really good at moving and striking from any position that is an advantage they do carry over the western mm -hmm. the western really needs to be cocked what I mean by cocked, in order to have an accurate strike, it has to have that S-curve and be pulled back in that cocked position. The rattlesnake strike is going to be faster. It's going to be longer if it wants to be, per its body length. Uh, their body length both get roughly about the same. But that rattlesnake can't strike behind it. It's not good at to the side. It's what's in front of it. This fucking thing has about a 360 degree strike range. So they both have advantages in the striking department. And they both have disadvantages. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of one of the covers of yeah. that with the yeah. strike hand. It's really kind of cool, you know. So, yeah, there is no wrong answer. There really isn't. As much as we talk shit about yeah. the other one, there's really not. You know, I, I love both of those species a lot, obviously. Um, the thing to remember, too, when you deal with venomous snakes, is even though we're going to come here and you guys are going to pick and say, well, this one's a better venomous snake than the other one, you know, uh, if you ever watch old Viper Keeper videos, or new Viper Keeper, I guess I was still making them, he has an intro and it says, what's the most venomous snake? The one that just bit you. And that really rings true. Yeah. So there isn't a venomous snake that's safe, except yeah. for a garter snake, and that's a technicality. Yeah. Or a hog nose. Or a hog nose. Or, or false water cobra. False water cobra. Asian vine snakes. Yeah. Yeah. There's but a if, it's a, if it's got fangs that do this, it's going to fuck your world. Yeah. That's just, you know... Best way to say it. Yeah. Even uh, if even if the fangs don't go like this, right? You still got some of them like fixed fangs, lapids. Oh yeah. If oh, you don't yeah. know what it is, just don't fuck with it. Leave it be. That's, it's a good answer. It's a good way to live. Yeah. Or have all your ten fingers. And something else you should know if you're not a constant subscriber to our channel, you should be. But you should know the venomous snakes that live in and around where you live. Yeah. 
Sure. I think that, you know, we get people send shit to me all the time going, is this a venomous snake? Do I need to worry about this? And there's only a, like few. Most places only have a handful, right? Mm -hmm. So look them up. Know what you're looking for mm -hmm. so you don't go killing rat snakes and things. You know, I get not wanting to have a copperhead by your kids or your dog. I get it. If I find them here, I relocate them. I don't want them by my dog either. But uh, know what you're dealing with. Yeah. It's your responsibility as a riding on the great ship of planet Earth to at least know what snakes are dangerous so you don't think all of them are. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Fair enough. All right, Kurt, you want to add? No. Caleb, anything you want to add? Two things, actually, oh, I was God. thinking of. Well, one, on that note of knowing your natives or whatever, mm -hmm. know, too, that that is not just because there's a rule. There's always exceptions. For instance, there is a saying, red to black, friend of Jack, or... Uh, Whatever, whatever. We've all heard that saying. Or red on yellow, dead fellow. Yeah, red on black, yeah. friend of Jack, or some shit. Yeah, some different iteration of that. That is not always the case in point, right? No. There are albinos. There are melanistics. There are um, false coral snakes. There's coral snakes that come in colors that are aberrant, which means that they don't match up like they should. Ever, they're they're atypical of what they usually look like. There's also a saying, you know, if it's got eyelets, uh, cat eyes. It's venomous. If it's got oval eyes or circular eyes, not venomous. Well, boom slangs and uh, king cobras and all kinds of things, mambas, arguably some of the most dangerous venomous snakes on the planet, uh, don't have cat eyes. They have ovals. And Asian vine snakes, arguably one of the least dangerous venomous snakes, has cat eyes. So That's a pretty good like rule of thumb for North America. Yeah. But it doesn't apply to, I don't know. No, and coral the rest snakes. Of the world. Coral snakes also have oval eyes. They do. You want to see something funny? Huh. Find a video or something of a guy who, like, was showing off that, you know, cool milk snake he found that was actually a coral snake. And you got to really work to piss one of those off to bite you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you really Wait do. Till it does. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then lastly, again, shameless plug, uh, check out our Instagram. I took it over and uh, I try and make a post every single day. And every once in a while, I, today's post, I see accidentally also got posted to the Facebook page. So check that out, because we'll also be posting on there accidentally sometimes. It's good news, actually. So uh, check those out. Other than that, though, we are good to go. We're going to slide on over to Patreon and talk about who we think is really the winner or something. I don't know. We'll come up with it. Um, well, so remember in your comments, if you haven't already made them, you're not picking about most exotic. You're picking up which one that you think makes the best venomous snake taking everything into totality that includes things like strike venom yield warning signs movement ability to catch and kill prey all of those things you know that that make it what it is uh don't don't downgrade my western just because it's outside your door we are blessed in america to have some of the coolest venomous snakes on the planet obviously this is much more exotic uh and i am so blessed every day to get to spend time with it uh, I love this thing. How big this thing has gotten. For those who yeah. remember when we just moved it, it was not quite this large. No, it's about to get upgraded again soon. Yeah. So, uh, really cool. So, anyway, you going to wag your tongue for us, girly girl? We do think it is a girl, if I remember right. Yes. Yeah. Which is, you know, nice because it'll get big. Uh, also, one thing they share in common is what? We didn't cover that, but we didn't cover it because it didn't really matter. They both do it. Reproduction. Oh, yeah, they both do live birth. They're both live birth snakes. Yeah. So, uh, remember some of my things. I said nice things about your Gaboon Viper. Yeah. You have to admit one thing. What's that? The heat pits. Yeah. How are the I heat pits? This snake lacks heat pits. Yeah, because it doesn't need to go catch its prey. It picks it up off the ground. It doesn't bite and wait for it to go die later. It just picks it up off the ground and lets it die in its mouth. The heat pits aren't for going to figure where it died at. They can actually track the scent of their venom. Yeah. The heat pits are for helping the hunt. Doesn't need to if, it prey had, comes to it. if it had heat pits, it'd see the prey better coming to it. Or it'd see the prey through brush that maybe it couldn't see through. Doesn't need that. Fucking just overpowers anything that comes to it. If that's the case, then that's why my snake also doesn't need two inch fangs and more venom. Its bite can kill you and it can rot your hand off. Yeah, but, you know, eight times out of ten it'll kill you. Two times you don't even need anti venom. This thing, ten times out of ten times you're dead. Unless it dry bites. Right, but we're talking venom bites. And there is anti-venom for it. We should point that yes, out. Yes, there is. When I say we're dead, it's mostly because the anti-venom is currently far enough away that there's really no point. Truth be told, it would be better if you were in Africa to be bit by this than, than a rattlesnake. rattlesnake. Indeed. Yeah. Just Indeed. because anti-venom is available. Yeah. But 
pound for pound, drop for drop, I this will give you that this thing has brutal. more venom, yeah. has a higher yield. You're talking these is two of the highest yield venom snakes on the planet. Uh, and it is a hotter venom. So it definitely can do more with the venom. But I don't think that's a, a, a bad thing. The rattlesnake can do enough. You know? Yeah, but do you want to do enough and just eh, get the job done? Or do you want to get the job done? Okay, so like the rattlesnake is like taking a, um, you know, a 50 cal, right? Yeah. And shooting somebody. Yeah. It's going to get the job done. Yeah. The blow parts off. This is like hitting them with a fucking bazooka. Yeah, just so you because... heard it here. Hitting them with, shooting a bazooka is way cooler than shooting a 50 cal. Is it? What's it the is. result? Everyone loves the explosion. <laughs> What's the result on the prey? It's vaporized. It's done. They're either Dunzo. both dead. The 50 cal Dunzo. or the bazooka doesn't matter. Dunzo. That's my point. Doesn't matter. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll both finish the job pretty well. All right, guys, we should probably put this thing back yeah. after we clean that cage. Kurt, anything yeah. you want to add? No. You want to touch it? No. Just give it a little scratch on the chin. It likes that. One thing I'll show you. Uh, if you want to put that back in the bucket yeah. while you're doing that, I'm going to get one thing. I'm going to actually help your argument because I'm a nice guy. I'm going to take a photo for Instagram real quick. Actually. Okay. I'm going to wait to do it off camera. But another shameless plug. Again, check our Instagram because I'm taking badass photos for you all. All right. I always say these things sound like Darth Vader, by the way. That's what they remind me of. Right, let's put her back in the bucket, and then I will share something that will... Whoa, that did not go as planned. And that is why you don't let it fling back. Perfect example. Uh, you ready? Yeah. Okay. Ballast weight. Oh, that's one that we didn't talk about how they use poo for a ballast weight. You know, put it back, I'll explain that. Yeah. So, because these guys have such a weird strike position, they don't shit very often, also because they don't want to foul up their hunting spot. When they get full of shit in the back, it actually acts as a weight ballast. Really, girl? Whoop. There, we got her back in there. Wasn't the prettiest, but it worked. So, while he's closing that up, just for comparison's sake, I wanted to show you some things. This is a nice clean gaboon viper fang they do shed their fangs that's a rattlesnake rattle i tend to keep the fangs that are shed don't ask me why i do this it's just kind of a little macabre thing that is a rattlesnake fang so for when we do talk about size there is a vast size difference um, that is either from a western or a timber it could be from either one but that one is from that actual kaboom. I can't tell you which snake that's from. We got so many. So I want to share that really quick. Guys, that's all we got. Make sure to like, subscribe, check out the Patreon. We will see you all uh, next time.